Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. This is our last theme of the school year. I can't believe it. And we are still learning about the summer season and we've added some beach and ocean activities for our two and three year olds. In our water table, we are going to be sorting colorful fish using sorting bowls. Now, I've been told by a reader that these fish, unfortunately, are no longer available on Amazon. I bought them mm, two years ago, I believe, but I'm still gonna put the link in the description because you never know, they could come back. That's happened with some of the other things that I have referred people to. They've sold out and then they've returned. What I love about these plastic fish is that on them, it's, the color is written on them, so it's a little extra literacy going on there, but you can use any kind of a plastic fish and just have matching sorting bowls, and we're gonna fill those bins up with water, and they can catch the fish using the nets. Our dramatic play area is the same as last week, and that's the picnic. And this is the first time that I have ever done a picnic dramatic play area and the children loved it so much last week that I'm so glad that we are trying this out um, this year where we keep some of our activities for more than a week because this is a perfect example of how I know the children are still gonna to wanna to play with this. And the reason they loved it so much, I realized, is because it's very meaningful for them because they've been on picnics with their family. So as soon as they entered the classroom, they knew what to do with this and they spread everything out. They had a picnic on the carpet and they loved it. And I will once again put the link to my picnic printables in the description and those are free. In our writing center, I have our seahorse printable and our fish printable. And I'll put a link to those in the description and we are also gonna be using these for art activities as I will show you in just a moment. On our light table, I have put some shells and some magnifying blocks for some exploration. And on the base of the light table, I actually took our paper towels and I laminated them because I loved the way they, it looked like sand. Teachers are so resourceful, right? And then I had a, some pictures of a wave that I laminated and put at the top. I don't know where they came from. It was something that somebody, one of the other teachers had stuck in our theme box, but it works. And I think it'll be a fun exploration area for the children. On our train table, we have turned it into uh, an ocean with all of our ocean animals. On our easel, we are using my free fish printable and we are using watercolors and shaving cream to paint them. And what I do is I pour some of the liquid watercolor in with the shaving cream and mix it in a cup and then the children will brush it onto the fish. The reason why I like to use shaving cream is because it thickens it and creates a really interesting texture and it kind of slows the process down and when it dries, it doesn't, it's, and it does flatten out a bit, but you definitely still feel and see a texture. In our sensory bin, we have our aquarium rock and we have some nets and some small ocean animals so the children can take the fish in and out using the nets. We'll just fill this with water, not too much water. You don't need a whole lot. And then we just have to make sure to drain the water at the end of each day, and then we'll just fill it up again the next day. In our Science and Exploration Center, we will be sorting shells depending on if they are smooth or not smooth. And this will be a fun way for the children to feel the shells and notice their similarities and differences. And then we also have some magnifying glasses so they can see the details. One of our table activities will be threading these ocean animal cards. And I also have this activity where, you know when you have a puzzle and it's missing pieces? I just can't put those kind of puzzles out. I'm sure most teachers can't. I mean, it's just, it's not fair, it's frustrating. So when that happens, I like to see if I can use the pieces without the frame. And so what I did, this was a magnetic puzzle, and I simply got a magnetic wand, and I put all the pieces out on a tray, and they will lift them using the magnetic wand, 
and put them into the bowl. Another table activity are these ocean card printables and if you subscribe to my newsletter last summer this was one of the free gifts when you subscribe so this might look familiar to you but I am once again sharing the free the freebie the link is in the description and there are two ways that you can do this and for our younger children I like to make two copies and keep one intact and separate the others and then the children can simply place the cards on top so they can see which ones match. So example is this right here, that one would go to one and they would just match all of them. And then for my older children, I take away, take this, the intact pieces away so you just have the cards and they will count what's on the card and then the, they will place all of them in numerical order from one to 10. One of our fine motor activities is going to be working on scissor skills. And I created these sun printable cards. Um, they're small, which works better for younger children. And when you download the printable, the link is in the description, you will see there are actually four cards on it. And I just cut along the solid black line, and then I have four cards, and then the children will take the scissors and they will cut along the dotted line starting at the bottom where the scissor symbol is cutting up to the sun. Another fine motor activity that we have is this seahorse. And again, the printable is in the description. And I am going to give the children cotton swabs and they are going to take temper paint and they're going to paint the seahorse using the cotton swabs. And using the cotton swabs is an extra fine motor step that I really love to do because of the way the children have to handle it. Plus using a Q-tip slows the process down. It's more intentional when they're placing the colors onto the paper. Another activity that we will do is the what is yellow. And last week, I shared, and I will take you over, let's pan over there. I shared this, what is yellow? And the children had put the yellow pieces on up there. You can see it's the top row. Now let's come back over here. When I originally made the copy of this, I forgot to select color, so I got a bunch of black and white. And I didn't just want to you know, throw them away, recycle them, whatever. I thought, you know what, this would be another great activity for filling it in and actually making it yellow. So they're gonna use dot markers, um, yellow ones, and they're going to go ahead and turn the sun into yellow. So you can simply download the What is Yellow printable, I'll put a link in the description, select black and white, not color, and then the children can actually color it and make it yellow. And another activity that we have is using the chunky stamps and the big stamp pads. These are ocean themed and I love how they have the knobs on the top. And the children can press them into the ink and then they can stamp them onto the paper. So that's how we have our classroom set up for our summer season with our theme being beach and ocean. Thanks for watching.